All right, today is the day my first ever analog recording and mixing console, the Trident 68, is leaving my studio and going to a new home. Yeah, well, it's not as heavy as it looks, I guess. Okay, I'm actually gonna. Okay. So let's tilt the front. There you go. Oh. I'm pass it to the yeah. big man. Thank okay. you. Or that awkward part, you know. Turn it this way. It. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. It's solid. Yeah. It's certainly not a uh, controller. It's like ridiculously. <sighs> I gotta say, I'm gonna miss having this behind me as far as. Just the, the look and feel of being near a console is, there is something that is just so cool. I mean, I love consoles, which is why this is probably a little confusing, but we'll get into that as the video goes on. A little bit of context, I got this console just over a year ago. I've had it for a little over a year and boy, it's complicated. So what I wanna share with you is my experience of just living with a console in general. Some of the positives, some of the negatives, and why I'm getting rid of my console. First question is, what is this console? This is a Trident 68. It's a 24 channel, all analog console. It's got eight channels of group monitors or master faders and 24 inputs. It's a great console. My thoughts on the this specific console itself are, I love it. I actually really like the console as far as the sound, as far as the quality of the preamps and the EQs, it's very easy to use, especially if, if you are opposite of me, looking to get a console is a really great entry into the console world. It's not that expensive relative to the console market. It's easy to get a lot of bang for your buck. I really like it. Now, Andrew, if you like the console, why the hell are you getting rid of it? Fair question, which leads us into my experience using the console. But before I get into my experience using the console, I think it's worth sharing why do studios have consoles and what is the benefit of having a console? I think there are multiple benefits of having a console. Depending on what the function of the studio and what is the purpose, the day-to-day -day time being spent, what you're doing in the studio, a console can be insanely helpful and insanely beneficial to the work that you're trying to do. Example one, you are a recording studio and you are booking your room to record microphones and a lot of inputs every single day. In this scenario, this is what most commercial studios are booked for. Most commercial studios have specialized rooms that sound really great. They're acoustically treated to be recorded in and have a unique sound that is just inviting, it's pleasant to hear. And then in the control room, you have a lot of the time a big console. The benefit of the big console in these commercial studios is you have a large number of inputs and in microphone preamps. This is beneficial because if you have multiple musicians or let's say you're doing a string session or a band or something like that, you're gonna have a lot of microphones and you're gonna need preamps for all those microphones, right? And when you're booking time in a studio, time is money, literally time is money. So you need to be able to go as fast as possible. You book the studio so that they can be prepared for the session ahead of time, kind of have all of those inputs already set for the session. And then when you put the microphones on the instruments, the engineer can go to the console and can adjust the preamp, the input level. And if they decide, maybe insert an EQ on the front end before you get started and then you can record either to tape or to the computer through all of your inputs. When your business is doing that, and it's doing that every single day, a console is incredibly useful, incredibly helpful, especially when you're doing new setups and different setups every day. That's example one. That is one tried and true example of why consoles are so awesome. Example two, for mixing. Analog consoles for mixing have been used for decades. The magic of running your signal through the circuitry of the console and using any EQs and just the summing, the glue, all of the transformers and meat and potatoes of the consoles adds that sort of magic weight and glue and air and all that stuff that, you know, depending on the console that you have, are specific to 
that model. Analog consoles do that thing. In other words, you have a song you need to be mixed, so maybe you hire a mixer who is going to mix through the console for your song, and they're gonna go from top to bottom, and they're gonna work on that song until the song is done, and then when they're done, usually you'll have to take recall sheets or pictures of the mix in case they ever need to come back for the mix. But you're getting the magic of that console for the mix, right? That is example two of why a console can be very beneficial. Again, you got a bunch of channels, a bunch of EQs, insert points, hardware, you can auxes so you can add effects, all that stuff, very beneficial. And then there's example three, which is somewhat of how I used this console and I think is more of a modern take on how you can use a console, which is going to be a split. Some of the channels on the console are going to be used for the inputs, meaning you're gonna have microphone preamps and EQs that you wanna use because they're awesome. And then some of the channels on the console you're gonna use as returns to do some analog summing and actually return your mix through that console to get some of that glue. Wow, good. You wanna say hi and smile, show your teeth? Look at this kid, he pulled both of his teeth out here. I lost five. Hey, what do you think the console's leaving today? What do you have to say to the people about that? Yeah, Brian's gonna come pick up the console today. Whoa, that was crazy. So that example of using the console for both inputs and tracking and for returns is a little bit of a hybrid and modern way of using the console. And that allows you to kind of get best of both worlds. You're not gonna do a full mix, but you can use some of the channels to do stereo mono returns for summing so you can still get some of that console glue. So those are three great ways to use an analog console. Now we get back to my experience and why I am no longer going to have an analog console in here. Because the work that I'm doing in my studio is a ton of different things. I am not just doing one single thing every single day. I am not just tracking, I am not just mixing. My experience is going to fall closer to example number three where I'm doing both recording and mixing. Now, I've tried using this console in mostly example one setting where I just use the entire board as inputs. I have a, like 20 some odd microphones that are live and inputs that are live in my studio that I use every time I record. We've got keys, bass, live drums, vocal mic setup, guitars, acoustic, percussion. There's stuff set and ready to go for anything. That is the hope of my studio. And for most of the time that I had this console, I had it set up for that purpose. Meaning all of the channels had microphones on them, which was great. Because of the nature of how I use my studio with needing everything always set up and ready to go with the occasional swapping of a mic or trying a different piece of gear or something like that. Once everything is set up on the console, I, I don't really need access to it. In other words, I don't need it right in front of me. Then I'm in this situation where I have this beautiful board right in front of me. I almost can't touch it because if I do touch it, then I change level or I change a setting or something that I have. So I'm in this weird situation where I have this big giant thing in front of me and I kind of can't touch it and also don't really need to touch it. So that was cool for a while. And then what happened is about five or six months ago, I started doing a lot more producing. With that came not just tracking and performing, but also came finishing the production, which involved a lot of mixing. And then with mixing, especially with me, I heavily lean on automation and on an all analog console like this one, there is no automation and no way to do automation. So I am using my controller with faders, which is the SSL UF8 and UF1 is what I have. And I gotta have a spot to put that. So since I wasn't using the console or needing access to, I literally setting my fader controllers on top of this console, which is absurd. And it's just not functional in a way. I just kept coming back to this issue of, man, I wish the console was not here. <laughs> which is something that you can only learn by having one and using it and putting it in this position. So that kind of like sat on my shoulder and in my head for several months. And then in January, I went and did a session at a studio called Bunker 5 here in Nashville. And my friend Edwin, who owns the studio, had this setup, which was, I think, the perfect solution. 
Now, with the console that I have, I cannot replicate the solution. So go with me here. Edwin's got this console. It's a 2448 by API. Great console, love API. The difference between his console and my console is it has this really amazing feature that I now think all analog consoles should have, which is called a producer's desk. Basically, you take an analog console, you cut it in half down the middle, and you space it out into two, and you put a desk. And on that desk, you can put your mouse and your keyboard, you can put your automation controller, your faders, and your computer screen. Because of the hybrid nature of us using computers and us using DAWs and doing automation with controllers, this is the ultimate setup in my opinion. Now, of course, my console is just, it's one piece. There's just no way for me to do that. And you know, a console like what he has is gonna be over $100,000. It's just a very expensive. So maybe one day I may come back to an analog console situation, but it's gonna have to have this center section for a producer's desk. So why is the producer's desk so important? Well, in a lot of commercial studios, if you've been to them, when they have the big consoles, where's the computer? Well, a lot of times the computer is on a little side table, which means when you're actually recording to the computer, you're not facing the speakers, which totally sucks, especially if you're trying to mix. You really need to face the speakers, right? So I was living in this situation for most of the time that I had this console in here. I had my table with my computer monitor on it, and I even had my SSL controllers right there at the table and my mouse and keyboard. And that was kind of cool. It's a standing desk, so I could kind of move around. But then when it comes time to mix and I'm doing mixes, I'm in this situation where I'm facing this way, the speakers are over here, and I'm writing automation, and I have to kind of do this head turn to, to actually hear. There's just no way to do it, which is why I, I wound up moving the controller onto the console and doing it like that. But again, having your controllers literally sitting on top of a console is just absolutely absurd. Now, here's the other element of this. I love microphone preamps, which means I have quite a selection and variety of outboard preamps. And because of the YouTube channel part of what I do and me being curious and loving to obsess over trying things perhaps too much, I have done a lot of preamp shootouts and I have different flavors of preamps that I really enjoy to use on different instruments. Why am I telling you all this? Well, the point is I have just come to the conclusion I need to get this console out of here. It is mostly just being neglected by me and- It deserves better. Am I right? It deserves better. <laughs> I feel wrong having this thing in front of me and I'm just, I'm really just not using it. I did do a mix through it, mostly just summing. I took a mix that I had already finished and I ran it through the board, summed it across 22 channels, inserted some of the EQs and man, it really did the thing. It, it enhanced the mix a lot, very easily. So I'm torn on this because I like the sound of the board. I like the preamps, I like the EQs and I like how it is summing through it, but it is just not worth it for me in my workflow. I need to be able to have all of the mics going through outboard pre's and getting the analog sauce on the input, but I don't want it right in front of me. Once it's set, it's set. If I need to tweak something, I can get up for a moment, tweak it, and that's it. I'm not writing preamp levels, you know what I mean? And if I'm gonna have gear next to me, I want it to be gear that I actually am gonna be touching, like EQs or compressors which is why I have this Danger Fox desk that has the racks right at hand's reach. But most importantly, I need to be facing my speakers and hearing the mix exactly how the listener is going to hear it. And I need to have my automation in front of me. So this is the main reason why the analog console is leaving. It is going to a great new home with my friend, Brian. I've talked to Brian. He is setting up a whole new studio. He's very excited. He's going to go on this journey with the analog console and the hybrid setup. From what I understand, he's gonna actually put it to the side of him. We'll see, I don't know. He's gonna go through the journey himself, but I am at least glad that it will be used by someone and it will actually get used because it's not getting used here in my studio. And from being honest, I, I just don't need it. I've got so much crap already. It's gonna be nice to kind of consolidate what I'm doing and make it super purpose built. Now, here's the other element. 
I'm moving studios. At the end of this month, I'm going to be moving out of this room and I'm going to be in a completely different space. So there is another element of just offloading extra crap that I'm not using. Not that the console is crap. But just if I have something and I'm not using it, I want to not have it anymore. I don't want to be carrying around and storing stuff that I'm not using. So here's the plan. We'll do a new video on the new setup. I'll just tease it a little bit, but it's going to be a really awesome hybrid setup of analog outboard gear and digital recording, mixing, but still using the best of both worlds. So I'm very excited about that. I wanna thank Trident and I wanna thank Sweetwater and all the companies that work with me and support what I do and my ability to be able to put myself in a position where I can try and experiment with all of this great gear and find out actual best ways to use it, the things I like, the things that I don't like, and then be able to share it with you and hope that you can get some value and some perspective. That's at the end of the day, I'm like my six-year-old son. I just wanna tell everyone what I'm doing and show them like, hey, look what I'm trying. I like this, I don't like this. The new setup's gonna be really great. I'm excited to show you how it's all laid out. It's gonna be very simple, a new interface. There's gonna be a new way of connecting everything. The headphones solves all of the problems that drive me nuts. And I think it's gonna be really beneficial to you to be able to kind of share some of that workflow stuff with you. And hopefully it'll improve your work and remove some friction from your day-to-day. -day. So. It's gonna be gone. Here it is, take a look at it one last time. Beautiful.